He was about to throw in the towel and prayed for an answer, never imagining what would happen next. When Arturo sat down on the road where he had been walking all day, he did not do it to rest. Barefoot and with his thirsty brother in his arms, the young man felt that his strength was running out. He stopped to pray to heaven for an answer to that dramatic situation in which he was involved because of the difficult situation in his country. It was then that the miracle occurred that he had been waiting for for weeks and that would take those brothers far away. Arturo had been born in a village hidden in the Colombian jungle, an inhospitable land plagued by the violence that has shaken the South American country for more than half a century. His parents were poor people. Although they wanted to, they never had the opportunity to leave the area because economic difficulties prevented them from achieving their dream of living in a more peaceful place. So, from birth, that child must have experienced the harshness of the context in which he lived. Without a hospital or health center nearby, the mother had to give birth in her own home, without professional medical assistance and in unhygienic conditions. Although the child survived the delivery, it was only the first of many obstacles he would face throughout his life. Arturo's parents had their own land where they grew vegetables and they tried to sell in the nearest town, but as the war intensified, their way of life became more difficult. On the one hand, the poor condition of the roads that connected the village with the town made it increasingly difficult to transport the food they had worked so hard to grow. This made the food more expensive at prices that buyers were not willing to pay, often forcing the farmers of the region to lose their harvest. On the other hand, armed groups were increasingly pressuring farmers in the sector to plant coca plants. It was very easy to give in to these pressures since refusal put one's life at risk while acceptance guaranteed considerable economic income. Arturo's parents, however, were among those few farmers who refused to fall into the path of illegality and continued with their honest and unprofitable crop of vegetables. They earned little, but were left with a clear conscience that they were acting correctly within the limits of the law. Unfortunately, war does not distinguish between good guys and bad guys. New armed enforcers began to arrive in the region and in their eagerness to dispute the territorial control of the organizations that had always had a presence there, they started bloody armed confrontations. As always, the civilian population was the victim, as it was left defenseless in the crossfire. Arturo's parents promised to leave the area as soon as the fighting subsided, even though they had to leave behind everything they had built up over a lifetime of work. Unfortunately, that conflict went on for more than half a year and by the time it was over, the mother was several months pregnant with her second child. Under those conditions, walking for hours to reach the city was dangerous for her health and the family decided to postpone the idea until the child on the way was a little older. The child was finally born and like his brother had to be delivered at home without medical assistance and in rather precarious hygienic conditions. But just like Arturo, he managed to survive the adversities. His parents didn't forget their plans to leave that land, but every year they postponed their intentions because a false peace had reassured them, believing that the violence would not flare up again. Unfortunately, the calm times they were living in were an illusion. A calm preceded the storm, and when the conflict returned, there was no time to save themselves. The respect that the family had managed to gain for their legal activity ended when a new drug gang took over the region in blood and fire and forcibly imposed the law that all farmers in the area should grow coca plants for them. Arturo's father tried to resist, but with weapons in hand, they made it clear to him that refusal was not an option if he wanted to stay alive. Materializing his dreams of escape from that reality was not an option either, as the criminals also made it clear that they would not allow any farmer to leave the area. Resign and with no other way out, the farmer and his wife were forced to change their vegetable crops for coca crops. It was relatively easy to take care of the plant and the money the bandits paid them was quite high. But finding themselves in that activity was something that made the family deeply uneasy and their fears soon became true. After a year in that new normality, the new national government proposed a military retaking of that territory to reintegrate it to the rule of law. The objective, which sounded very fair, was put into practice by means that were anything but peaceful, and the area experienced an upsurge of violence 
as never seen before. Every day, there were bombings, murders, rapes, threats, and even house fires. But even in the midst of that situation, the drug gangs refused to relinquish control of the area and kept up the pressure on the farmers to continue growing coca plants, prohibiting them from leaving the region. That situation went on for more than a week until the National Army finally managed to take control of the situation. But just when that family thought that the worst was over and that they would finally have peace of mind, their new problems were about to begin. The new government had proposed to be totally aggressive towards the drug trafficking phenomenon, and that policy not only implied successful military operations such as the one that had just taken place, but also the criminalization of all the actors involved in the production of cocaine in this country. In this case, the courts did not differentiate between intellectual authors and farmers, but all were prosecuted equally as drug traffickers. Among them were Arturo and Alfonso's parents, who were captured once the army was present in the area and each of them was sentenced to more than a decade in prison. Although in the official rhetoric of the children orphaned by that policy, they would be immediately taken in by the government institutions and their care and the search for adoptive homes for them would be undertaken. In practice, none of this took place and Arturo and Alfonso found themselves without a mother and father when they were just children and in the middle of a territory that, although pacified, still breathed attention. Arturo, the eldest of the brothers, remembered his parents' eternal plans to leave the area and, desperate for the situation in which he found himself, he took his brother and they left together in search of a better life in the city. But the walk was long, and facing it without food and water, Alfonso, the youngest of the brothers, quickly became dehydrated. Arturo had to carry his arms, and even though he also felt weak and without strength, when they finally reached the national road, they realized that they still had hours of walking left to reach the city. Disappointed and thinking that everything would end there, Arturo threw himself on the road to cry, hoping to find an answer in heaven and his prayers were answered because a team of journalists who were on their way to the area to cover the bombings saw the children and stopped to interview them. They gave them food and water and upon hearing their story, they transported them in the car. Amidst the media coverage and human rights complaints, the children's parents were released within a month and were reunited with their children, who now live in the Colombian capital as part of a work program for people displaced by violence. If you like the video, don't forget to like it and leave your opinion in the comments box. Subscribe for more stories like this one and share it with your friends. Talk to you next time.